applications. The That's same. right. So the question was, can we have two um, different variants of an application? Let's say Uve has done, done the application and it's uh, themed in a sea-based style and the other one's themed in a German railway style. Um, there would have to be two separate application submissions and they would appear as two different downloads here. Any other questions? Up here? Um, is there a way to um, automate the process of um, submitting my code to a repository and then have it instantly into the uh, beta store? No, the um, it's, a ma it's an upload process on the website. It's a manual process today. There's no automation click in an IDE and upload into the store today. So there's no API, uh, proper API to to automate this? No, no. There's no API. Yes? A short question. You have this uh, screening process for applications. Uh, are the applications submitted for beta testing also screened? No. Um, beta test um, applications do not pass validation. The beta testing all happens prior to validation. So this is the step just before. And once you've finished your beta testing and you, you think your application is ready to pass validation, your customer has agreed, yes, fine, this is exactly how you want it, and you can click the button and have the validation. And here's some information on validation. How we validate your application, I'm not going to bore you about all the details, but you can look it up. Um, the guidelines is on appdeveloper.intel.com and so on validation guidelines. So there's a lengthy document there that explains in detail how we test your application, what your application is allowed to do and what it's not allowed to do. There is also a age rating on there. The highest age rating is 17 plus. That's the highest you can go. And uh, we check your application against this, but nothing else. There's no hidden agendas. There's nothing that would hit you out of the blue. It's all clearly stated in the guidelines. We have a question. Um, how long does it take usually um, to pass validation? The SLA is seven days. Typically, we are less and in March, we had an average of two and a half to three days validation time, but uh, it can take up to seven days. That's how what we say. Validation is free of cost. We don't charge you for validation. You can submit as many times as you want. And as many applications as you want, we don't charge you for anything. And at the end, the application comes out, you get an email, you've passed the application, and it appears in the store. You can tell us in one of the stages of validate, go back, please go back. Um, in upload info, I think it is, in, uh, you can uh, say when you want your application to appear in the store, start date, end date. So let's say you're writing a Christmas application you're submitting next week. You don't want to appear in the store in two weeks' time. You want it in the store for Christmas. So you would set a start date, maybe 1st of December, and end date 1st of January. So you can set start date, end date window when you want your application published. This also allows you to withdraw your application. So let's say you've got your application in the store, and you want to take it out of the store again for whatever reason, then you can change the publish date to the past, and then it comes out of the store. You said... Who um, said Paul? Monica. Monica did. So uh, I want to know, it's a little bit different from the topic we're talking now about. Um, you said that 70% is for the developer. What if there is a developer team? Because I'm more coming from the okay. GUI user interface uh, okay. theming design area. And let's say I'm de program something with him. Okay. Um, and we put that up, and we think that he did 80% of the work, and I did 20% of the work. Okay. What happens then? Okay. Now, what happens is um, we've structured this, the developer program in two ways. We have developers and organizations. The organization owns the application, and the organization can only be controlled by uh, one organization admin. 
Excuse me? Uh, one or many admins, at least one admin. Many? Have you looked? You know better than I do. Thank you. And uh, the admins allow developers into the organization and can also take them out of the organization. Um, this allows, for example, uh, a publishing house to, to take freelance developers. And uh, let's say you are, I would be the ISV and you want to do an application and I pay you to do that then I will allow you into my organization. You could submit an application for my, for my organization. I would get the money. If it's bought, you wouldn't get anything. The contractual agreement, how much money you get, would have to be outside of the store. This is not part of the store. Or if a team of people would do this, how they interact with each other financially would have to be settled outside of the store. It's not settled inside the store. Yes. Okay. I've just heard that the pizza has arrived. Um, so then I'll let's join the developer program and let's have a break.
Hallo, hallo, hallo. Ho. Ähm, nachdem die Pizza jetzt vergangen ist und Bier portabel ist, würde ich euch alle bitten, zurückzukommen an die Stühle. Uh, pizza is gone and uh, you can carry your beers and whatever your other stuff you're drinking back to your chairs. And then we can continue. Thank you. Becks alkoholfrei, ja, ja. Es schmeckt doch nicht so gut wie echtes Bier. Okay. Um, normally, you would see another guy standing here in a similar shirt with no hair on his head called Uli. Uli Dumschat. He couldn't make it to Berlin. Um, so I'm going to do his presentation. A presentation all about tools and um, s how to improve the performance of your applications. Intel, a software development tools provider. Uh, you might be scratching your heads. I told you uh, about an hour ago that Intel is a silicon company and we make take buckets of sand and turn it into money. Um, you might be surprised to hear that Intel is one of the biggest software development companies in the world. We think we're the third or fourth largest software development company in the world. Um, but nobody really buys a lot of Intel software. Well, most of our software is drivers and operating system components and pieces of other software like that. But we also do quite some very good development tools. We do fantastic compilers and optimization tools that I'm going to uh, say a bit about. Um, these are the supported platforms, Windows, Linux, Mac OS, Migo, RTOS, these are the operating systems we support. Um, all our tools are focused on getting the most performance out of your application running on an Intel CPU. When we speak to developers and we ask them what do they expect out of a tool package, these are the most common questions. They want to port their existing applications create them quicker, time to market, um, publish it quicker, get the most performance out of it, squeeze the last bit of juice out of the CPU, especially if you're running on a, on a mobile platform, the CPUs are not the quad-core 5 gigahertz machines you have under your desks. Um, you want less power consumption on portable devices, a big topic. And you want fast technical support. These, these are goals, these are things we hear we want to address with our tools. This is the overview of the agenda. Let's dive in. Um, I showed you the Amigo portal on the other slide set. This is the what the download side looks like. It's a very, very small print. Check it out yourself. More or less you see at the top a uh, section called develop. This is where tool package is. Uh, SDK suite. Uh, the next one down says test. Okay, up up. I can't. Uh, I can't read it. Um, this is where you can download the store client. I've been asked in the break uh, if we already have a store client for Migo. Yes, we do. When we launched up up for Migo in February, we already had a preliminary version of an alpha version of the store client for Migo for netbooks and for Migo for tablets. So as a developer, you can download these clients here and test your application. I must warn you, the version you find today is really, really bad. It's crude, it doesn't work very well, but we're continuously updating and in a few weeks time, you'll find a better version out there. Um, you'll also find the Migo SDK suite on there. Um, the version we're up there now is not really the newest, the latest, the most latest version you can find on Migo.com. Try that out. We will be updating our SDK package in a few days. Uh, and then at the bottom, last section, tune. These are the tools 
that I want to tell you more about right now. This is the page we saw in the other presentation. The first two parts here where it says create and test. This is what you can also download from Migo.com. This is the Qt Creator, the GCC, GDD, uh, all these pack tools that you already are familiar with and you've used. What we add to these uh, tool package is the performance analyzer, VTune, the C and C++ compiler, multimedia libraries, and threading libraries. So these are packages that come along from Intel, and we make them available to you, free, uh, to you as a Migo developer free. We don't charge you for anything. They're free of cost for you to use them to develop Migo applications. Normally, we charge, I think, something in the range of $2,500 for the C compiler alone. So you're getting tools here for at least $2,500 free of cost to use for your development. Um, you might have heard about the C compiler before. It's used a lot in benchmarking servers and desktops because of really high-performing C compiler and makes some excellent code. I'll skip this Qt development environment because you've already had a Qt session here a few weeks ago. Um, we don't change the Qt development environment, we leave it as it is. Qt creator. Also application testing, we don't change any of this. You can still use the common tool suite. What we do change is optimizing applications. This is the performance maps to power consumption. Why? Why is performance important for power consumption? Does anyone know? Well, if you could read, you could see it here at the bottom. The faster an application is finished, the quicker the CPU gets back to idle. Um, if you think about your smartphones and tablets or other computers, most of the time, the device is waiting for you to do something, to press a button, to move something, to touch something. Most of the time, the CPU is sleeping. And the fastest it gets back to that state, the less power it uses. So power consumption is, uh, is a factor of uh, uh, some of many factors. One of them is how fast it gets something done so it can get back to idle state. So it's not only it's pure power consumption. So the next generation SDK suite, we're going to add more debuggers, tracing and memory checks. We're going to do build some new power consumption measurements tools where you can measure the, the power consumption of your application. And um, so with a standard tool package, you achieve this power over time. And with an optimized app, we want to get down to this area, so you get faster down to idle mode. This is where we're, we're aiming at. And we want to give you these tools to allow this, to make this possible. Part of the power consumption is obviously silicon-driven technology, the process that we use to build these CPUs. We're improving the process all the time. You've probably heard of the latest shrinks to x nanometers that we're doing. We're continuing this and this will bring the base power down and then adding the tools on top will bring the complete profile of power consumption. Here are the packages again and uh, better results downwards. Obviously, the best performance you can get if you go into your source code and manually tweak it and put some assembly in there as the best power consumption or the best performance you can get out of it. At the top, the easier things is analyze your code, recompile it with a better compiler, and use libraries as highly optimized libraries. VTune, the analyzer, what does it do? Essentially, it's two parts. One part stays in your host, one part on your device. What it does is it collects 
statistical data on how your application runs, how many opcodes, uh, uh, CPU cycles uh, are passed in a certain time frame. It collects this data and passes this data back to the host where you can do some analysis here and find out what is your application doing, where is the CPU spending its time. There are different ways to do that. One is a method called time-based sampling. Most uh, developers use that. It's essentially the application is interrupted on a fixed time base stamp. One millisecond is the default time base. You can change that. And every millisecond, the tool VTune collects information of the status of the system which part of the application is it current running, currently in running in, and what state is it in. Another method would be the so-called event-based sampling. Um, here we use a piece of silicon that's uh, built into s Intel CPUs called the PMU. There are, I think, a hundred and something different events that you can trigger on, CPU internal events. Um, special opcode groups, page mismatches and things you can trigger against and also collect data. So these are very special things for optimizing code. Um, Time-based sampling is the most generic and easier to understand and easy to use without knowing too much detail of how the CPU works. Uh, what you get out of it is a screen like this. It's a bit too small print to read so I'll explain it. Here essentially is a list of functions, functions that would be in your code. And then here you have a bar graph and also numbers. This is the number of CPU cycles were spent on that function when this application run. So we can clearly see which functions are using up the most CPU time. Okay. So then you go into this function and then you go down to source code. That's the screen on the top. And there you can see s line for line of this C, C++, was it C++? Yeah, it could be C or C++ code. Wh how many CPU cycles, instructions, were spent on each of these lines? So this allows you to find the hotspots, which part of your code, which functions are using CPU time, and which source lines is this. So you can go in there, have a look at these source lines, and find methods of changing this and optimizing it. Of course, the best op optimization is deleting it. <laughs> if you don't need this function, take it out of your code. Uh, it's not always possible, but you can go in there, check it out. Maybe you can use threading to make it to do some parallel pro processing, introduce two, two, two threads or three threads or something to make it easier on the CPU load to use parallel um, possibilities in the CPU. Or you're um, doing some multimedia application and you can you go back to the multimedia libraries we also supply and use multimedia primitives that have been highly optimized to run very effectively. So different methods of optimizing your code here. But it allows you to find what's happening because most of the time you don't really know what your application is doing. It's doing something. And then you have to build in trace statements or print Fs or whatever to find out what it's doing. Here you can see very neatly and clearly what's happening, where is it spending most of its time. C, C++ compiler, as I said, it's a highly optimizing compiler. It's used in lots and lots of benchmarks. If you open up magazines with benchmarks, you typically see the Intel C++ and C compiler listed there. It uh, is highly optimized to run on the uh, Intel architectures. We'll also optimize other architectures, but obviously we get the most out of our own ap architecture here. Um, works on parallelism, inlining, taking out dead code, uh, argument passing through registers. Is highly goes through your co code and optimizes it to run. Your code might be longer afterwards because of this, because of inlining, for example, but it'll run quicker. Um, you might not want to use the C compiler for your complete application because the code could be longer in size, bigger in size. You might want to focus on the critical areas. So if you're 
if you've done your analysis, you might find that it's just these three functions that are critical. So you let the C compiler from Intel run on those three functions and let the GCC run on the others. That make gives a more compact code. So you can set your compiler switches for different parts and you can mix GCC and, and Intel C compiler code and link them through the same linker. We use the same linker, we don't have an our own linker. So our output, our compiler output is directly compatible with GCC. We've got some comparisons running here. Intel, integer and floating point code compared to GCC and our compiler. You can see for yourself, on the Intel side, there's not much of an improvement 10 to 18 percent, typically around 20, 25 percent, the user feels a difference. Below 20 percent, it's difficult to feel a difference in, in application speed, unless it's a really hard number crunching that long runs for longish time. But for normal UI-based interfaces, 20 percent is sort of a benchmark. But if you clearly see if you're using floating point, just recompiling your code makes it quicker. And making it quicker, it gets done quicker, the user has a better experience and it comes back to idle state a lot quicker and uses less power. Just by simple recompiling. No change in code. Um, what we also have are the integrated performance primitives. These are libraries that we give to you royalty free, not in source code. And they're highly optimized and they've been developed over many, many years within Intel. This is nothing that we've just done recently. There is many, many years of Intel engineering into these primitives to uh, make them highly optimized. And they're based all around multimedia imaging, videos, compacting and expanding images, um, communication signal processing, data processing. So if you have to do anything with all sorts of these multimedia functions. Have a look at these primitives. You'll definitely find some packages in there, some library that will help you to do whatever you're trying to do in your application to do it quicker, to make it run quicker and smoother. If you, it you goes down to the, all the possibilities that the CPU offers, all these special function codes and all these packages, all these special opcodes are used to make it as quick, as fast as possible. What we also have is uh, multi-threading building blocks. These are open source. Um, so if you're planning to use uh, threading in your applications, for example, you want to ch have a, a user th a UI thread and background thread, or maybe another thread that loads data off servers and stuff, and you need communication, you'll find the in threading building blocks are very useful for handling these threads and, and controlling them. Again, uh, Intel CPUs are multi-threaded, and um, this helps you a lot. Also on the Atom processor, um, to uh, spread the, um, the load of your CPU over different threads to make it run quicker. Publishing to Intel App App Center, what we're also planning to do to package into the tool uh, an easier publication method. It uh, goes a little in bit into the question you asked earlier about APIs and automated. It's not fully automated, but uh, wasn't it you? You were sitting there, you went away. Um, we're planning to do that. Uh, it's not fully there that yet, but we're going to do this. Vision. What we, as I said, we're introducing more and more tools. We're trying to make your life easier. We want to integrate the C compiler fully into Qt and Qt Creator. So you can, within the IDE, set the compiler switches and change whatever you want to do. Um, power analysis tools are coming along. They're on the roadmap. So you can check your application, how much power, how much uh, will it use power in sense of electricity power. Yeah. Porting tools, this is something on our roadmap as well. Um, 
We're developing a tool that allows you to port an application from 